Hello, it is Thursday, October 26th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Thursday crossword today, which means we're having some sort of interesting or intricate theme. So look forward to that. I'm always curious to uh, to get into the Thursday puzzle and see what it's all about. And this one is brought to us by William Camtron, Henrik Koskinen, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are, of course, sustaining this channel and this series, keeping this all going. I'm very appreciative uh, of their efforts, as I am of the efforts of everybody who's a patron. Thanks if that includes you. Um, and if it would, if you'd like it to, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. There, of course, you can find all the bonus videos available to patrons. And um, that reminds me, I need to solve yet again this week's uh, Boss Words Fall Themeless League competition puzzle. Those have been uh, very tricky for me this, this season, so we'll see how I do with that. Anyway, look forward to that in the coming days. And... Um, what else? There's the official mug for benefactors on there as well. Um, do consider subscribing to the channel if you've been enjoying these videos. I do appreciate that uh, considerably as well. So thanks to everybody who's done that. And uh, there's also the Daily Solve Discord chat server you can check out. It's a nice friendly chat community. There's a link in the description field underneath the video. And you can join that to spend some time with some very friendly people who also watch these videos. All right. Uh, all that said, let's get on to the puzzle. This is a debut construction by John Donegan. And um, like I say, it's a Thursday puzzle, so it will have some sort of interesting or intricate theme. Uh, and let's find out what it is. Let's start solving. Oh, it was edited as always by Will Shorts. Did I say that? I can't remember if I said that. Maybe I did. Apologies if I'm uh, repeating myself. In any case, let's start solving. And ta-da, maybe? I don't know. It's not how I'd ordinarily spell ta-da. Voila, maybe? Could be. Let's look at the crosses, see if there's anything to this. Biblical kingdom on the Arabian Peninsula. Hmm. I can't immediately think what that is, so I'm going to delete this because I, I can't immediately confirm or deny it. Character who nails a doubloon to the Pequod's mask. That would be Captain Ahab from... Um, uh, uh, Herman Melville's Moby Dick. Sorry, it took me a moment there. Okay, let's look at the crosses from this. Tony E.G., that's an award, an award given uh, to Broadway stage productions. Uh, word with copy or currency. Hard copy or hard currency are both, both phrases. Alamo competitor. So I think in this case, Alamo is referring to a car rental agency. So uh, Avis, I guess, would be another one of those. Settle down. B looks like B. Wave looks likely here. Surfer's wish. Yes, a surfer hopes for a wave to surf the waves. So settle down. B still, maybe? B still. You could you could say B still, and that would sort of mean settle down. So but let's see if that works here. Polymath called the first teacher by medieval scholars. That sounds like Aristotle. So there we go. And here we have what a multitasker might kill. I, when I see these long answers, especially in a themed puzzle, I do assume, well, I mean, almost exclusively in a themed puzzle, I do assume it is going to be thematic. Um, but I don't know if this is. There's no question mark. There aren't any sort of symbols. Uh, but I guess there aren't any symbols in the grid anywhere. So who knows just yet. Maker of small front end loaders. I don't know what that's referring to. If not for the T, I would have maybe guessed John Deere. I don't know. What a multitasker might kill. Probably some sort of time multitasker might kill kill time. I don't know. I mean, that sounds reasonable, but I can't think what the rest of it is. Does that help with this? No. Bottoms out? Question mark. I don't know. Forager with tiny hooks on its tongue. And afflicted. If you're afflicted, you're ill, you're sick. Do or die, hair salon name. So you could imagine, so obviously the phrase do or die is a common phrase, but you could imagine a hair salon being named that with the I replaced with a Y to indicate dyeing one's hair a different color. One knocking on many doors. Um, this feels like it should be punny. 
Is it a name for a door, a literal door knocker? I'm not sure. Last remaining, the only one, the last remaining one, maybe. Bottoms out. And forager with tiny hooks on its tongue. Oh, an anteater? I bet that's right. So what is one knocking on many doors? A, a maid? Why would that be true? One's, one knocking on many doors. I feel like that must be right, but I can't quite think why. A maid. Oh, because in a hotel. Sorry. Okay. This, apologies to those e yelling at the screen about this. Uh, yes, a maid in a hotel might knock on many doors to check if someone is in before she attempts to clean the room. Okay, so bottoms out. Maybe this isn't time. Oh, two birds with one stone, a multitasker. That's what that phrase means, of course. To kill two birds with one stone means to achieve multiple things at once. So a multitasker might, but I can't spell two. I mean, two birds doesn't fit. Is it bird, bird, stone? In other words, sort of we literally represented two birds with one stone. I bet that's it. Okay, so this is, as it turns out, this is a thematic entry, I suspect. And we'll have other kind of literally represented uh, sayings, presumably. Okay, so bottoms out. Oh, moons as in you moon someone, you show them your rear end, you, you take your bottom out. Okay, off the hook, so to speak. Something safe, you're off the hook. Maker of small front end loaders. I'm still not sure about this. Say further, to add something is to say it further. An inkling, if you have just an inkling, you have an idea about something. To look up and down, to... Here we have author Zora Neale Hurston, who I believe wrote Their Eyes Were Watching God, which I remember reading when I was young. Look up and down. Don't know why I can't guess that what that is. Book it, abbreviation. So book it could mean to free, to, sorry, to flee or to reserve something, obviously. And what it's impossible to be in two places at once. Um, no, sorry, be place, place, two places. At the same time, at once. I can't think what the rest of it is that we can fit in two letters. Two places at is presumably here, and then the thing that it's, that it's at is the last word. But I, oh, I, can't, I can't think what it is, but I think this must be the first bit, at least. So curator's field, you could be a curator of art. And like half of the odd couple... Oh, neat. So The Odd Couple was a play and then a and then a uh, sitcom featuring a sort of very neat character and a slovenly character. So I think that's probably the answer. Uh, digital number 10, as in you have sort of 10 digits, 10 fingers or 10 toes. Uh, Tolkien tree creature is an ent. Oh, so this is two places. Oh, I see. Sorry, I missed. Right, of course. The two birds, one stone. I forgot about applying the one, two places at once. At only occurs once. Again, sorry if you're if you're frustrated at my my uh, slowness there. So yes, two places at once. Very clever. This is very well done. Off the hook, so to speak. Oh, okay. I guess if you describe a party or something as being off the hook, you could say it was insane. And maker of small front end loaders. I see. Tonka. So Tonka that manufactures toy trucks and, and I guess, I don't know, other heavy equipment. And so um, they make a front end loader, but literally a small one because it's a small toy. Okay, sunny side of breakfast would be the yolk of a sunny side up egg, which is um, what that refers to. Hearty affirmations could be yes, I suppose. Might be other ways to formulate that in the proper number of letters. Noted honky-tonk venue, familiarly. I think this is probably the Opry, the Grand Ole Opry, 
um, which is a uh, famous country music venue. Let's see. Boating noun and verb or to to or is is uh, to you know row in the boat, but also an or is the thing you do that with. Damage, so to speak. Cost, as in, what's the damage? Well, how much does it cost? Maybe. Let's see if we can get that with crosses. Plays the ponies say. So you bet. You bet on horses. I think that's what this is referring to. And reluctant to relive an experience. Oh, once bitten, twice shy. There we go. So we're doing this in the reverse order. Uh, bitten, shy, shy. There we go. Very good. Uh, but we're following the same sort of rule. Book it. Oh, an appointment. I see. Right. Interesting. Usually we don't see this kind of clue in this form. Often, if the... So book it, we're saying that about the thing. Uh, book it doesn't mean appointment, but book it is something you would do to you know to an appointment or to create an appointment. And so usually when this happens, there there will off, very often there will be an exclamation point or something um, to indicate it's like a sort of being exclaimed about the thing. Uh, not here, so you just have to find your way to it yourself. Okay, Bobby Soxer's dance, a hop as in the Lindy Hop, maybe. Um, sort of an old-timey dance. I mean, Bobby Soxer is kind of an old-timey uh, phrase. Where Miss Aloha Hula is cr uh, Hula is crowned. Uh, Hilo, I guess. Hilo Hawaii. Wouldn't have known that fact off the top of my head, but with the cross, I'm guessing that's the answer. But let's let's check the these other crosses and see. Subgenre lead in. So alt is a common subgenre for alternative, you know, alt rock or or whatever. Sound of a sock, uh, bam, I guess, and particularly as represented in comic strips, I suppose, someone punching someone might have, uh, you know, bam sound indicated. But let's see if that works. Farm animal in tot speak, a moo cow, maybe. That's how a small child would refer to a cow. And then FDR purchased the f first one. An ebook? <laughs> Is that true? I doubt it. Doesn't make any sense at all. I'm trying, I was just trying to think if there was some strange precursor to, to the ebook where you could say, ah, actually, it was invented in 1938, and you know this funny thing that you've never heard of. Uh, I don't think that's the case. An e bond, maybe. That would make much more sense. Curriculum overhaul triggered by the Sputnik crisis. New. Um, curriculum overhaul triggered by the Sputnik crisis. New math? I, I, I mean, you do hear people argue about new math. I mean, I, I wouldn't have known that it had anything to do with the space race, but maybe it did. Um, let's keep looking. The treat in trick or treat. Candy in, um, you know, children going trick or treating. One's giving you a leg up. Ottomans, so uh, not the Ottoman Empire, but rather the um, piece of furniture that you can rest your feet on, giving you a leg up. Top grossing movie of 1987. Interesting. This is presumably another thematic clue. What do I think that is? Um... I don't know. I'm trying to think of films that was I like two men and a baby, for instance, but uh, that's not going to be the answer. Let's see. Get out of bed, sleepyhead. Uh, and here we have something one may regret hitting. Sand? No, hitting sand. That doesn't make any sense. I was trying to think of sort of if you fall down. Oh, but strangely, almost that, hitting send, you may regret hitting send on an email. Manipulate, yeah, manipulate is use. Watch it actually be sand, that would be extraordinary. Stroke, uh, this looks like, I was going to say easy, but it's not. It's crafty site, it's Etsy, it's where people might sell crafts. And then get out of bed, sleepyhead. Oh, up up and atom is a, is a thing 
that people say to to encourage someone to wake up. So stroke uh, to stroke a, a you know dog or a cat to to give the, to pet them. So there we go. So this is send, and then this is going to be e bond. <laughs> Certainly not ebook. I don't know what I was thinking when I said that. Uh, top grossing movie of nineteen eighty seven. Maybe this is, is it Two Men and a Baby? I honestly have no idea what year that movie came out. I've never seen it, so I don't, I don't, is it? Maybe. Razor Brand, oh, Atra, I think is a razor, but it's one of these things I only know because it comes up in the crosswords sometimes. Maybe it is, let's keep looking. Blank Tetra, Neon Tetra, is that a fish? I think. Here we have City of Paris. Uh, right, so we're not referring to Paris, France, or even Paris, Texas, but rather um, the city of Troy, the, the the largely mythical city of, of Troy, at least the you know, stories about it are, are mythical, and then Paris, the uh, ma- mythological figure associated with the Trojan War. Okay, blank Gruber, arch-villain in Die Hard. That's Hans Gruber uh, from the film Die Hard. So, oh... Show six downs, show awards, Emmys, right? Okay, it's because they're they're given to um, uh, television programs, TV shows. There we go. Oh, is it three men and a baby? It must be. Okay, well, I guess my initial instinct was sort of right, uh, but I had the movie wrong, and I was convinced that the entire answer was wrong. Um, so I didn't do myself very many favors there, but I guess it did slightly help me uh, move on once I decided to give it a shot. Okay, slice, e.g. That's a brand of soda. Spirit filled. If a, you could have a spirit filled house, maybe it's haunted. And the question mark indicates a bit of a pun there. Sanctuaries, oases. Um, an oasis is often used to, to refer to a sanctuary. Low islands, arcades. There we go. To go by, if time goes by, it elapses. And all right then, so be it, you could say. That's how it is. They're lit at funerals. You can have a funeral pyre, a fire. And then to slice off is to lop off uh, something. And then to narrow something is to taper it. So in this case, narrow is being used as a a verb rather than an adjective. Here we have commercial 49 across, commercial moo cow. Elsie the cow is used as a mascot for something. I don't actually remember what, but yeah, I mean, I'm aware of that in the broadest possible terms. And then what a haymaker makes. So this is not referring to punching somebody as we had with sock earlier in the puzzle, sock and um, bam over here, but rather someone literally making bales of hay. So on a farm, for instance. Here we have finer points, slangily, deets, give me the deets, give me the details. And biblical kingdom on the Arabian Peninsula. Oh, would that be? It'll be Sheba. It'll be the kingdom of Sheba. There we go. Does that help me with this? And... Still don't see it. Cough drop flavoring. Um, Cough drop. What is cough drop flavor? That would start with an H and five letters. I'm not sure. First name in cosmetics. Este as in Este Lauder. And then long, long time. An age. You could say that, you know, it took an age. It took a long, long time. Take on a joint liability would be to co-sign a loan or or mortgage or something. And then salad sometimes, but soup rarely. An, oh, an entree in the in the North American sense, where an entree would refer to a main a main dish, which could be a salad, rarely a soup. And oh, and scene, I see. So right, so this is referring to um, I don't know someone doing maybe an improvisatory scene, or maybe a director says and scene or something like that to end a scene on stage or a film set. Uh, desperate straits could you could be in, in great need. You can be in desperate straits. And to look, ah, to look someone up and down is to eyeball them. I don't know why I couldn't think of that, but I didn't. And cough drop flavoring honey. Okay, fair enough. A honey flavored cough drop. I've never had that, but it sounds plausible. So there we go. That was the Thursday crossword. A very nice uh, self-explanatory theme. So a multitasker might kill two birds with one stone. Literally bird, bird, stone. Uh, what it's impossible to be in. It's impossible to be in a place, place at, or two places um, at once. It took me a moment to remember how that worked again. 
Uh, let's see. To be reluctant to relive an experience is to be uh, bitten shy shy or once bitten twice shy. Um, the top grossing movie of 1987 was not Man Man Baby, but rather Man 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 Baby or Three Men and a Baby. And I think that's it. That was our Thursday theme. Very nice. Very um, relatively sort of self-contained and simple. Uh, let me know when you caught on to that one. I think I think this one came fairly easily early on just because of the crosses putting together what that was was going to be. So I would imagine that was probably the case for uh, a fair few other people, but let me know. Um, I'm always interested in that. You can let me know in the comments or the uh, Discord server. In any case, there we go. That was the Thursday crossword. And I just realized I forgot to look up clues from yesterday's puzzle. I'll just pause the video, find those, and be right back. All right, I'm back and I have some comments from yesterday's puzzle and its clues. So let's discuss those quickly. James Dickey uh, explains, Mesmer, that's Franz Mesmer, developed therapeutic hypnotism. Mesmerism is quaintly a synonym for hypnosis. So yes, um, I basically remembered that, but not, not entirely. So thank you for jogging my memory there. Uh, Brian Parente explains, a citron is just another citrus fruit, cousin of lemons and oranges. And um, this is another thing that I actually uh, basically did know and completely forgot. And the other thing that I had previously learned about this w and just didn't remember at all uh, was pointed out by Brian Spurrier, who says, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But when life didn't give us lemons, we made those too. Lemons are a man-made hybrid of citrons and bitter oranges. I did not remember that lemons were specifically a hybrid of uh, citrons and bitter oranges, but I did remember that citrons predated lemons, and I just couldn't bring that fact to mind yesterday, which was very irritating in retrospect. So thank you, Brian Spurrier, for giving me even more information about it. And then here's something I definitely didn't know from Brian Parente. Fun fact, the original Dwayne Reed drugstore was located in Manhattan on Broadway between Dwayne Street and Reed Street. That's a very good fact. Uh, and finally, T. Steinlauf says, I'm mentioning this because after watching your solves for a number of days, I'm fairly sure you'd want to know that the word that I pronounced, Botswain, is always pronounced boson, in spite of the, the plethora of unsounded letters. Um, I would want to know, and I am a sailor, so I do know. Uh, <laughs> uh, there we go. And yeah, I do want to know. I am glad you've told me. And uh, that's probably something I've come across before, absolutely forgot. Um, and yeah, often it is spelled that way. It's often spelled B-O apostrophe S-U-N. And I had sort of just thought, I think broadly, I guess both pronunciations are maintained. No, um, it is always pronounced boson. And as soon as I saw that comment, I realized, oh, I'm sure I've read that before. It's ridiculous that I forgot. I'll probably forget again, but I hope I don't. I think it's less likely I'll forget now that it's been explained in a comment. <laughs> so we'll see. But feel free to pull me up on it if I make the mistake in the future. Anyway, that was that. That was the um, the crossword for Thursday. That was today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will, of course, be back tomorrow for the themeless Friday crossword. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.